Yeah, I'm Shelly Martinez, a.k.a. Desire. Um, I've always wanted to be a wrestler since I was a little girl. After high school, got into some modeling, knowing it'd come together with finding out how to be a wrestler. That's before MTV had Tough Enough and all that good stuff. So it finally came together. A casting director remembered I loved wrestling and put me in an independent film about wrestling, and I met my first trainer there. And here I am. So what was it like trying to be a wrestler? Like, how difficult was that? You know, it's not easy, but when I first started training, I knew that wrestling is what I really, truly was supposed to be, you know, involved in wrestling and everything. Um, it was tough at first, but it was it's like a drug. I can't stop. I've tried to quit it's getting discouraged with my career at times, and I just can't. It's seriously a drug to me, and, you know, it's paid off for sure. What, um, what are your dreams in the, in the business? Well... When I was about five years old, my dad asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, and I said, a wrestler. So my dream has always been to be in the WWE, and so that's what I've been striving for. I've been wrestling for five years now, and that's been my ultimate goal. Are you intimidated at all, like trying to get into the WWE and training, like with OVW? To um, no, I was at OVW for a couple weeks in November and December, and. Their training is pretty, you know, hardcore, which I love because it kicks your butt, you know. They have people there to push you because um, you tend to get lazy sometimes when you're training and it's the same routine after another. So it's good and I'm not intimidated at all. I mean, this business has been such a part of my life, especially the last five years, being in the inside of it. So I'm not intimidated. I just I set my goals in my mind on what I need to do and what I need to do to get to my ultimate goal, which is to be on Raw or SmackDown. Do you, uh, do you feel like the politics in the business, like in the companies might hold you back at all, or will that make things harder for you? Or? I don't know, because, you know, the politics, you know, just with indie wrestling and, you know, in WWE too, it's just, it can get ugly. I've been a part of going through all that trash that happens, trying to be successful, and, you know, it's rough. It, it's rough, and, you know, it is a concern. I mean, everybody has that concern, because you never know, because politics can make you or break you, you know? How did, uh, like, when WCW and ECW died, how did that, like, affect indie wrestling? Like, did that make it harder for people to seek employment, or...? Yeah, I think so, just because um, there's no competition out there for McMahon anymore, so... I think that's why there's a lot of the storylines that are going on. It's not as, it, wrestling's not at the high point anymore, and I think a lot of that has to do with, it's pretty much all just McMahon, and there's no competition. And, you know, they let, they had so much talent, because when he bought out, you know, WCW, and then all these people to work, good workers too, and then they end up getting let go, or they don't get used, and eventually got let go. So yeah, I think it had a huge impact on wrestling as a whole. What, um, so we should ask you about. Do you have any ideas on questions that you would like to answer? Hmm. That's probably the hardest question I'll ask you. I know. <laughs> um, I don't know. What's a good one? <laughs> What's it like being backstage at Raw or SmackDown? You know what? The first time I ever went to um, the tapings, I was really, really nervous because I figured first impressions are the ones that usually last. And then there's all these people who, you know, you're fans of for how long, and you don't want to freaking mark out to them or anything. So, you know, there's a couple, I admit, there's a couple that I wanted to totally mark out for, but, you know, I, I kept my cool. I think I did pretty good. Um, at first, I was really nervous, but as, you know, I was backstage more and the day progressed and... By the time it was time for the show to be taped and stuff, I was totally fine. And now when I go, you know, I love being there because it's a, for me, it's been a pretty good atmosphere for the most part. So, I mean, it's cool, but at the beginning, it was the first couple hours of Raw when I was there for the first time was pretty 
intense for me because I was trying to just not look like the geek, the indie wrestler girl who's, you know, trying to put over all the guys. What, uh, in, in the wrestling business, like, do you feel there's, like, a, it's harder for a woman to succeed than a man, or is there any, like, bias? Um, yes and no. Yes, because it is male-dominated sport, um, and sometimes the women aren't taken very seriously, but at the same time, you know, I, I know the reason why I got looked at at the beginning, you know. I've only been wrestling for five years. Some people, great wrestlers, wrestle in the Indies for 10 years, and then they finally get, you know, looked at by WWE. And I know that's because of the way I look and because I'm a girl, and they saw that maybe they can make money off of me. And so it was to my advantage, you know. But the way I look at it is, yeah, that may have got me in the door, and people like to bitch and complain oh you know she's only tits and that's why you know WWE has her or whatever and you know maybe it got me in the door but me as a person me as a wrestler and what I can offer the company because there's so many girls look at the diva search there's all these girls they have tits and ass too but you know not all of them are going to get signed not all of them are going to ever be seen again by WWE it's because they lacked what you know they're really looking for and so that's you know it's a double-edged sword you know it helped me, but then in the past, yeah, I've, I've had some troubles because I am the only girl at the shows, like at the indie shows and stuff. And, you know, you have to deal with girls being catty, other female wrestlers, or even the guys. Like, you know, when I first started getting looked at by WWE, I found that a lot of my matches, you know, people were trying to stiff me, you know. I, I would hear them before I even do the match, oh, I'm going to stiff her. You know, guys too, guys and girls, you know. So... I don't know. It's just the way you look at it, I guess. What do you... What, let me set this down for just a second. Um, like, what's your opinion on, like, the diva search? Like, when these girls that haven't worked in the business are getting, like, a huge contract, and then somebody like you who's worked in the business for many years um, probably won't get near the same value of a contract as this girl who just walked on. Well, the way I look at it is... Yeah, the money part, that's the big thing, not just with me that kind of irks me, but with other people uh, that are in the business. But, you know, I mean, seriously, a lot of these girls, they're not going to really even last, you know, unless they legit start to care about, you know, being there. I don't see them lasting, or they have spots that are just retarded. So, you know, I rather, you know, the, the way I deal with it, I guess, is... I'm there to be a wrestler. That's what my passion is. That's always been my passion. Not to be just there to have a pillow fight or whatever they do. So it doesn't bother me as much. But I would say the part that I think is, you know, sucks and isn't cool is the fact that they are getting paid, like, you know, a ridiculous amount of money. And some of them don't even care. Like, I heard my girlfriend had told me that uh, I think it was Maria and Christy were talking. And, um... I think it was Maria saying, you know, why why does the crowd keep yelling what? Why do they keep saying what? And then Christy says, oh, that's something The Rock used to say. And then when I heard that, I was just like, are you kidding me? How do you not know this? It's like something as retarded as that. They're just so not in the business. So that kind of stuff, I'm just like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? I have to roll my eyes. Even though Maria's a sweetheart, so is Christy. But it's just like that's just a little example of like, really? Okay, you do not know your product, you know? So... It doesn't bother me as much, I guess, the more I thought of it. I mean, they're just trying to make money, you know. They're pretty girls. Go for it, I guess. But, God, that is a lot of money. <laughs> what, do you, what do you anticipate, like, backstage in the women's division, let's say you're on Raw? Um, like, do you expect it to be kind of catty between you and the other girls and jealousy, or do you expect everything to be very smooth? Um, I don't know. I don't know. When I go there now... Um, I, you know, for the most part, most of the girls are pretty cool to me, you know, but then I know there is that chance of, you know, getting there and it's like, oh, they're worried about their spot or whatever, but, you know, I'm friends with a lot of the wrestlers that are there already and I've gotten a lot of really good advice from them and one of them told me, you know, when you get here, you know, it's your job, but it's like high school all over again. So just make sure you keep to yourself, you're cordial to everybody, you say hello, you shake their hand, goodbye, shake their hand. So be, 
I guess just have like work etiquette. You got to, you know, even though it's wrestling, it is your job. You know, you got to have work etiquette. So that's what I'm planning on doing is, you know, I in the indie scene, in just the indie scene, I made the mistake of, you know, befriending people, trusting people right away, just because that's the kind of person I am, just to get backstabbed, you know, and it's not cool. So I kind of learned the hard way to like, just keep to yourself. Business is business. Yeah, I have my friends and they're my good friends. So let's keep it at that. I don't need any new friends, but just be professional. So that's what I plan on doing. Just keeping to myself, but still be cordial and be professional. And hopefully that'll get me the least amount of drama as possible. Let me ask you one. Like growing up, like who were your favorite wrestlers? Like what did inspire you to have the dream of being a wrestler? Well, I used to watch wrestling with my grandpa and my dad all the time. I love the Ultimate Warrior. I remember I used to tie rubber bands on me and put little streamers and run around the house. And me and my cousins would be in the backyard and pretend we're playing wrestling. And so. It's just stuff like that. You know, I love the Ultimate Warrior. I love Sergeant Slaughter. I love that guy. Um, the Bushwhackers, those guys ruled. God, there was just so many good, even Macho Man. I mean, who didn't love Macho Man? Either you loved him or you hated him. Um, Bret Hart. God, there's just so many good wrestlers. Like, God, I love them. And I love watching my old tapes and watching them. But one thing that definitely, definitely made me realized that that's something I could do is when glow wrestling came around and that's when I was like wow these women are really in there like the guys are and I think that's what really turned my oh I want to be there one day kind of thing to I have to be there and I was a little girl when that happened so I think that's why I'm so passionate about wrestling and I take it so seriously because it does date back to when I was little and that's all I've ever thought about how about um like do you, like, what do you think is causing the downfall of the, the business to an extent, like, the entertainment value of it, like, not so many people tune in as they used to, I used to be, like, some near, like, 10 million people right. watching on Monday nights, now it's, like, 4 or 5 million, what do you think that is? I just think that the product has weakened a lot, I think that you see a lot of either the same stuff over and over and it's just too repetitive, or you're just seeing not interesting things happening anymore and you know it sucks because I remember just like in the 90s when wrestling was like god everybody watched wrestling you know and I just think that it's gotten there's been times where it's gotten a little too I guess goofy if that's not a gay enough word to say but goofy at times and people are just like are you kidding me so I just think that the product is just weakened like storylines have weakened and I think that um, wrestling, just like with anything else, comes in waves, and for a while now it's been its downfall, and I hope and I think that hopefully it'll go back up again to where, you know, wrestling is to where it used to be, because it needs to be. How about, um, if you don't want to answer any questions, just fine, if I understand, like, I always ask people about the drugs and the work business and the union, if they think that's possible or if they want that, I always ask people that, um, if you don't want to answer that, it's fine. Okay. Um, like, like a lot of wrestlers do, uh, not a lot, but some do abuse drugs, like right. the pain, the travel. Like, what is your opinion on that? Like, is there any way for that to stop, or is that just going to continue and continue? I don't think it's going to ever stop. Um, you know, just like with anything, drugs are always going to be there. I mean, I personally, you know, I've never been into it. I mean, I've never even smoked pot, you know, not interested. But, I mean, it's always going to be there. It's in every sport. It's in, look at these actors. I mean, it's everywhere. It just happens, you know, especially when you have such a demanding job and, you know, we use our bodies time after time. And, I mean, I could see why people get hooked on pain pills and or sleeping pills because they can't sleep and, you know, so I'm not saying necessarily it's 100% okay to abuse drugs, but I mean, there's I think there's reasons behind everything, and that's why people get hooked on them, whether it be pain pills or crack. I mean, what are you gonna do? I mean, it's just an everyday life. It it just so happens that you know people want to talk about the drugs in wrestling because it's wrestling, and they don't think, okay, well, what about the crackhead down the street? They leave that guy alone, but. It's just because they're in the eye of the public. What are you going to do? Um, like, 
wrestlers to an extent are uh, like they can be fired without a reason. You know, there's no safety net for jobs. Like, do you think a union could help, and how could wrestlers go about like developing a union? By developing it, I'm not sure. But you know what? I never thought about that before. I think that'd be great because, I mean, if you get a union going, maybe you can get some insurance. You know, medical insurance. It could help you out there. Um, the whole firing thing, you know, some people, it's really unfortunate how they get fired sometimes, and it sucks, and you, you know, you feel for that person, like, oh, God, and then you start thinking, oh, my God, what if that can be me, you know, so it, it, it kind of puts an added stress to everything, and it's not cool, but, I mean, that's a really good idea. I never thought of that before. What's your opinion on Lita, and if you don't answer that, I understand, like, what's your opinion on her and what happened with Edge and Matt Hardy? I think Matt is a great guy. He, I've met him a handful of times. He's always been really nice. People, I have people that are friends with him that I know, and I hear nothing but good things about him. I think it's fucked up what she did to him. Um, I think it's fucked up what you know Adam did to him, being his friend. Um, I don't know. It's just wrong. I mean, he's a good guy. He was there for her when she hurt her neck and you know I mean I don't know if this is true but I heard stories that like he was just so sweet to her and you know even though she gained a little weight he would still tell her how beautiful she was and like to hear that and then to hear that like she's just been totally cheat I mean I know people cheat it happens I mean I've done it before it happens you know whatever but I mean when it's somebody that you've been with forever and then it's with one of their friends and you let it go for so long that's what's fucked up. I mean, things happen. Let the person know, hey, I'm sorry, it didn't work out. You know, oops, I did this or whatever. I don't know. That's the fucked up part right there, man. Um, did you watch the ECW pay per view? Yes. Yeah. What did you think about like like JBL beating up me? See, that part was gay. Like, I don't know. I mean, it was all right. I thought it was gonna be worse, but I really, really enjoyed the whole pay per view. I thought it. Was ruled. I loved it. I became a fan again. I haven't been able to be a fan since I started wrestling, since I've been in the business instead of just being a fan. So it was cool that I was able to be a fan again, but they should have just stuck with ECW, leave the whole WWE thing out of it. It would have been, I think it would have been better. But I did pop when Heyman called out uh, Edge about Lita and Matt. (laughs) I have to admit that part. (laughs) Yeah, I thought it was a great show. I thought it was, in my opinion, I thought it was better than WrestleMania. Yeah, for um, sure. For yeah, sure. Uh, um, so what else should I ask you? What, what, what's your opinion of, like, the creative process in wrestling? Like, there isn't so much creative process involved in indies. It's mainly just, like, there, there's sometimes there's, like, a booking or, like, a like a couple weeks of build-up. But, like, on the, the mainstream level, like, how, what's your opinion on, like, that and, how the writing is nowadays and what's your whole opinion of like the creative process um i'm a big fan of the creative process because you know one of the things that always intrigued me about wrestling was it's like a play but instead of words you're using your body you're telling a story so when you throw in two guys that you build them up to why they hate each other or two girls why they hate each other i think that's great because you know you need a story there it can't just be just straight wrestling or else you know you go watch olympic wrestling style wrestling you know but i think sometimes um the writing could be a little better you know that's why a lot of gimmicks fail and then people think oh well this guy sucks this chick sucks and it's not so much that they suck it's they've been told what they can and can't do they've been told how they're supposed to look like and I mean sometimes that stuff doesn't work out and it's not cool but I mean we do need that creative writing you know I think they should let you incorporate maybe your two cents into your character but I mean I know that's not going to happen I mean you gotta especially in WWE you gotta listen to what they say or else you can lose your job but I don't know. I'm a, I'm for it for sure, but I mean, in the last couple years, it's been kind of poor. Hopefully, it changes. Hey, what's your opinion on Vince McMahon? Vince McMahon. He. I don't know. Like he's a powerful man. Everybody wants to work for him, whether they admit it or not. They do. 
Um, but at the same time, he's very cutthroat. Um, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if he sold himself to the devil, but that's a whole other story. But I don't know. He's he's the person everybody wants to work for, but the person that everybody ends up hating. So I don't know. I don't know what my opinion is about him. That's a good question. <laughs> I'm kind of half and half. <laughs> Have you met him before? I've met him one time. And let me tell you, I was very intimidated because I've met a lot of people like to where I was kind of starstruck, but I was able to contain myself. But I thought to myself, like, what do I say to Vince McMahon, you know? How do I not come off retarded and, like, talk to Vince McMahon? So I was very intimidated by him, but he was really nice to me. He was very, very nice, you know, shook my hand and was very, very courteous to me. So I have nothing personally to say bad about him. He's never, like, did anything to me to make me think, oh, that guy's a bastard or anything. What, uh, can you tell me, like, a funny story, like, that you have about being a wrestler and something happened in the ring or a match backstage or something, like, ridiculously funny that happened to you? I have a gross story. I was doing, um, this touring with this lucha fed that I was training at when I was just doing lucha libre, and we were on the road all the time, and, um, we were doing a show up north in Northern California, and... It was that time of the month for me. And we get out there, I put my gear on, I had like a little skirt with some like little shorts underneath or whatever. I go out there and wrestle. Just for my boyfriend at the time to tell me, um, the whole time you were wrestling, we saw your tampon stream. Now that was awful because I know all these people, there were so many people there. And it was one of those things where it was like an outdoors thing, so they're really close to the ring. So God, I know everybody saw that and that was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> And I don't know. I was going to a show in Philly once, and um, I hate flying. And the plane was starting to go through the whole like turbulence thing, so I was like, okay, I better go to the restroom right now. So I go to the restroom, and I do this whole hovering thing over public bathrooms. And then, damn it, if the freaking turbulence didn't kick in, I went through the door because I didn't close it all the way, I didn't realize it. Pants down pee all over me and then no it couldn't have been the bathroom in the back it was the one in the middle where there's people here and here so everybody's looking at me i am more mad than embarrassed because i hit my elbow on the way falling out the stewardess come and try to help me try to get my pants on I go back in the bathroom kind of clean up a little bit i have to go to my seat get some new clothes go to another bathroom and then as i'm walking past all those people the stewardess says, oh, we'd like to inform you that the lavatory and such and such um, area is closed because the door malfunctioned. And everybody was just looking at me, laughing, and I was just like, oh my god, only me, only me. <laughs> What's your opinion on, like, the internet when it comes to wrestling? You know, I don't know. There's a lot of freaking retardedness that goes on. Like, there's message boards where people, you know, they just tear apart people so much. And it's like, it's not, it, what's the point? Like, come on, really? So, it's cool to find out little things that are going on. Like, I know people like, even me too, I like to find out things on the internet, like interesting things. But when it comes to bashing people and all that, like, that's not cool at all, you know? Especially when people, like, I know sometimes they'll get, like, three different screen names and, like, post all these things. And it's just, like, you know, sometimes you got to be careful on what you post. Because me, I used to have an eating disorder when I was younger. And, you know, I know some people were, like writing stuff about me and it really messed me up it made me go back to my eating store saying that I needed to go throw up my food and all this and it's like yeah I can take some beating up that's fine but like sometimes people don't know what they're really doing to somebody like those people don't realize what they did to me you know being so unhealthy and like you know it's not cool so as far as rumor stuff goes yeah I'm for it it's cool but people bashing other people on the internet I'm so against that